Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and it's not happened yet. I probably have taken down two videos. The reason for that is because, not because feedback or anything, but not only was um, the testing a little bit iffy, but the data was wrong. When I went through my charts, I realized that even on the data in the right order, because of the way Excel works, it was allocating the wrong names to the wrong data sets. So I retested the drives to verify the data because I have most of these drives still. I've tested some of them before I get rid of them again. And then I painstakingly went through and made sure the graphs were 100% accurate. And then I realized, oh, this data now makes a lot more sense. So today we are looking at four SSDs to our QLC, to our TLC, and we're gonna find out if you're gonna spend roughly $60 for an NVMe SSD, <clears throat> what are you getting out of a TLC drive? Does a QLC drive have any kind of benefits or not? I don't actually know the answer now that I know that my data was not correct, but we're about to find out. Let me introduce you to my standardized test bench that I have used for almost everything recently. And that is a Ryzen 5 3600 cooled by Dark Rock Pro 4, a 16 gigabyte DDR4 3600 MHz CL19 memory kit. The At the time it was the ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard, EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. And then we have more products from Be Quiet. The Pure Power 11 650 watt, the Silent Base 801, and the in this case the SSDs are going to vary. <clears throat> now, it is very important to note that these tests are done at 25, 50, and 75% capacity on fresh installs of Windows 10 running the 1903 update. <clears throat> now, the contenders. We have for the QLC or TLC, excuse me, we have the Kingston A2000, uh, which is going to be a 500 gig drive. It runs at 2200 megabytes per second read, 2000 megabits, me megabytes per second write. Using the Micron 96 layer 3D TLC NAND memory, five year warranty, SLC cache is up to 100 gigabytes depending on how much um, space is left. 350 terabytes of endurance and it's using the Silicon Motion SM2263 controller. Now, the contender here is the Silicon Power P34A80. That is a 512 gigabyte drive boasting a 3200 megabytes per second read, 3000 megabytes per second write using a Toshiba 64L or 64 layer 3D TLC NAND memory. Five year warranty, its SLC cache is unknown. 250 terabytes of write endurance and it's using the Fison PS5012-E12 controller. Now, moving over to the two QLC contenders here, we have the Crucial P1 500 gig, right at 1900 and 950. Uh, also using a Micron controller, this is a 64 layer 3D QLC NAND controller. Five year warranty, SLC cache ranges from five to 50 gigs depending on capacity and how much is available. And its endurance is only 100 terabytes and it's using the SM2263 uh, silicon motion controller. Now the Intel 512 gig is a little bit larger, 512 gigs, a little bit slower, 1500 megabytes per second read, 1000 megabytes per second write. It's using the IMFT64 layer 3D QLC NAND, five year warranty, anywhere from a six to a 24 gig SLC cache, also with 100 terabytes of endurance. And it's also using the Silicon Motion SM2263 controller. Whew. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at our one gig benchmarks. Now, let's first look at read and writes for ASSSD at one gig. The Silicon Power just takes the victory, uh, boasting near 2,000 megabytes per second on the write and nearly 3,000 megabytes per second on the uh, read. Do note when we hit high capacities, the sequential write does drop a little bit, but it's maybe 20-ish percent. Uh, the Kingston A2000 does uh, pretty well at second, but as soon as we hit 75%, it is dropping substantially on the writes. And interesting enough, the Crucial P1 and the Intel 660P are performing very identical uh, on both reads and writes. The reads going to Crucial, the writes going to Intel. 
Taking a look at 64 threads, uh, we have silicon power winning in read, but write. It is actually performing with the um, QLC SSDs. Do note that on the write section, the Kingston 8000 does drop again with 75% fill. So those two are kind of going one, two, and interestingly enough, the QLC SSDs are actually performing very close in both with a pretty big drop off at 75% um, on the uh, 64 thread test. Now let's move up to 10 gigs. So going up to 10 gigs, uh, read and write, kind of a similar story here. So the 10 gig reads for the silicon power are still up there. Kingston 8 2000 is gonna be second and then Crucial and Intel. So very similar to the previous. Going to write, the Kingston 8 2000 had a better write until we had 75% and then it had a huge drop off. The Silicon Power did have some small drops as it filled up, but it's staying really good. The Intel did beat out Crucial a little bit here. However, a big drop off at 75% with the P1 being very consistent. Now, 64 threads, we have the Silicon Power winning here, but on, on the read side, uh, the Kingston 8 2000 big drop off at 75%. The Crucial and the Intel basically performing almost identical. On the right side, the A2000 performs the best. Big drop off at 75%. The Crucial, well, the next two, three are pretty close to each other. Both QLCs have a big drop off at 20 or 75% here, but the Silicon Power holds pretty strong with only a small drop off. Now, let's look at user benchmark here. Looking at user benchmark, what's interesting is the Kingston A2000 wins on read followed by Silicon Power, Crucial, and Intel are all pretty much tied. On right, Silicon Power holds strong with very small drop-offs at each level. The A2000, huge drop-off, 75%. And the QLC drives pretty much performing very close to each other. Intel a little faster than Crucial on right, Crucial a little faster than Intel on read. Uh, user benchmark mixed. Um, Silicon Power wins on this one at one, one and a half gigabits per second, um, or gigabytes per second, I guess it would be. Uh, both of the QLC drives are performing very close with the Crucial technically having one but its margin of error. The A2000 flat out sucked on this test. Just It just did. I'm not entirely sure why, but it just did. Sustain writes though, the A2000 is the fastest, but also has a big drop off, more than 50%. The silicon power drops off at 50%, but then holds strong up to 75%. The Crucial kind of follows a very similar pattern as the Intel drive does, and it just continues to drop off as the capacity gets filled. I think that's a pretty accurate representation. Now, here's my notes, and I'll give you which one I think you should buy, and there's gonna be two. When we look at the Silicon Power, it's the best overall performance. It does lack performance in large data sets, uh, but it has the least fall off from going from 25 to 50 to 75%. It does have the smallest SLC cache, but it doesn't have any kind of huge drop off in performance. It's pretty gradual. The Crucial P1 in my, from testing, for, in real world testing, has one of the largest of the uh, four in SLC cache. Um, it performs very consistent. There's a couple tests where it has some big drop offs, but it's a very consistent performing drive. And I use a one terabyte version of my main ring and I'm very happy with it. Uh, moving to the Kingston A2000, basically once you hit over 50% approaching three quarters, it just drops off in writes, sometimes in reads, but almost every write test had that particular drive dropping off substantially. And the Intel 660P is basically a clone of the P1. It performs worse in reads, a little bit better in writes. That's pretty much the too long didn't read. It drops off a little harder than the P1 in like one or two tests, but that's it. So which one do you buy? I think there's two contenders. Now, looking at the correct data, the Silicon Power P34 A80 is, in my opinion, the best drive of the bunch. It has a decent size write endurance of 250 terab uh, terabytes. It doesn't have big drop-offs. It doesn't have a large SLC cache up. That's the only downside. So if you're writing a lot of large data sets, such as what I do, it may not be ideal. The other one's gonna be the Crucial P1. The reason why is, while it does have 
a smaller endurance and only uh, 100 terabytes. It's, it has a larger SLC cache and it performs very consistent and very close in most tests to the rated numbers. So I like that SSD a lot. The other two, the A2000 and the Intel 660P. Now the A2000, I use my laptop, it's fine. I'm just not gonna recommend it at this point. It, it's not cheaper really than the other ones and it has a really big drop off at, large, at high capacity fill. The 660P, the only downside is, is it's just not quite as good as the P1 in most scenarios. The reads are a little bit slower, the writes only a smidgen faster. It does have a little bit more drop off than the P1. But I will say this, if you can't find a P1 and a 660P is 10, $15 less, that's fine to buy. But if all these are in that $60 range, I'm gonna recommend the silicon power for most users. Power users like me, for example, might actually benefit from the P1 due to the faster or larger amounts of SLZ cash. So that is pretty much it. Uh, that is my roundup. The previous tests are being removed off YouTube for having false information. And this is the video to cover all these. Um, I am going to give a big shout out to Silicon Power for supplying me with the P34 880 SSD. You can find a link to their website and also where to buy any of these SSDs in the link in the description below. Uh, like the video if you liked it, and dislike if you dislike, leave a comment, and get subscribed. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you later on down the road.